Welcome back. We all know, but our international audience that watches us on YouTube might not be quite so aware that South Africa is an absolute biker's paradise. The country is huge. It covers everything from jungle to desert, snowy 10,000 foot plus mountains to tropical beaches, and it has a generally well-maintained road network. It also has tens of thousands of kilometers of untarred road, so if you're an adventure bike rider, it doesn't get much better than SA. That's probably why we have such a strong biking culture, and we're not shy about adopting and buying into the latest tech. You don't have to go far to see top of the range super bikes and adventure bikes and tourers from all the manufacturers. Though there is one segment of the market where we lag far behind other parts of the world and that's electric power. We are all too aware how fragile our electricity generating infrastructure is. Load shedding, which is another way of saying temporary blackout, is unfortunately a fact of life. And that understandably makes people wary about buying into the burgeoning electric power revolution. Deeper than that though, bikers in this country ride, whether it be commuting or for pleasure, much greater distances than the average journey in say Europe. And so concerns about range are entirely justified. But regardless of that, the rest of the world marches on electrically. And at the Consumer Electronics Show, CES, held in Las Vegas at the beginning of January, Damon Motorcycles unveiled a naked version of their electrically powered sport bike. We featured their Hypersport Superbike model as a bit of news on the program before, although we haven't heard too much from them in the past two years since it was launched also at CES. Not too surprising really, given the dreaded lurgy that's spread around the planet and messed with all of our plans. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas is the usual attitude to America's party town, but Damon wants the world to know about its electrically powered entry into the Hyper Naked class. So here goes. The new naked version is called the Hyper Fighter Colossus, a name that is typically North American in its subtle, discreet reference to its abilities. Not. With just 100 units in the production run, it is intended to be even more exclusive than the Hypersport, though it is available in three different versions. The top of the range Colossus will cost you about 550,000 Rand and come with a lovely single side swing arm, Erlen suspension and Brembo brakes. The Unlimited 20 drops those specific components but keeps the same power and range, but also reduces the price down to 390 grand while the Unlimited 15 sucks away a bit of the power and range for even more of a reasonable price at 290,000 Rand. The original Hypersport Superbike made headlines thanks to its reliance on the number 200. That denoted its equivalent horsepower, the torque in Newton meters, its range in miles, and its 200 mile an hour top speed. In this naked format, the top speed falls from 320 k's an hour to about 270 k's an hour, but Good luck to you hanging on to that without the help of a fairing. The range also takes a little bit of a beating. Damon's co-pilot system of radars and cameras carries over from the Superbike version as well. So you get 360 degree coverage of up to 64 objects and AI that can supposedly predict these objects paths and provide you early warning of any impending danger via haptic feedback through the handlebar and some dashboard lights and the adjustable riding position on the move also carries over from the original model. So at the touch of a button, you should be able to adjust foot peg and handlebar positioning to make for a more sporty or more relaxed riding position as required. This all sounds utterly brilliant and I have to say the <laughs> really does look very good and you can put a 4,000 Rand deposit down right now and book yourself one of the 100 units being made. When you might actually get the bike, we currently have no idea. And how good these as yet untested systems, by us or anyone we know, will actually be, we also have no idea. But a 4,000 Rand deposit for what could be a groundbreaking machine doesn't seem too much to lose if it turns out to be a bit of a lemming. I do though think I'd have to get rid of that Colossus decal on the front fairing. It's just, I mean, you know, it's, it's just embarrassing. And has anyone at Damon heard about 
tempting fate. Perhaps a bit of modesty wouldn't go amiss at a point when you aren't as yet established as being completely credible as far as any of these claims go. Just maybe? Oh well, let's stay with electric power and mention a couple of models that I saw at EICMA towards the end of last year. These are rather more tame, believable bikes from companies who generally already have a proven track record. Let us begin with NEW's RQI sport motorcycle that is intended for urban use. It says the range is up to 120 kilometers, but I would imagine is significantly less than that if you visit its 100 an hour top speed too frequently. It has two 72 volt batteries, fast charging, but quite how fast it didn't say, and there's a launch mode that isn't as you might imagine for getting it off the line quickly, but is rather for providing a bit of a boost in acceleration when you're already underway. There is, apparently, also news iconic halo headlight arrangement that looks a lot like Husqvarna's lights, or actually even Ducati's new monster, which itself has a slight claim to being iconic in a genuine way. The RQI would in theory, if I'm extrapolating correctly, be available for about 125,000 Rand. Moving on, we have this funky looking scooter from Chinese manufacturer Philo. Before you all get up in arms as I did about it looking rather too similar to one of Kimco's models, all is well since Philo are actually in a partnership with the Taiwanese firm. Spindly forks, relatively big wheels, good looking bodywork, it is most definitely a scooter like millions of little single cylinder models noisily going about their business all over the planet. Except this one is quiet because it's electrically powered and in its top of the range DX version is capable of a pretty impressive 140 kilometer range. The most interesting feature though of this 70,000 Rand scooter is a two speed transmission. So in its lowest ratio, it is more nippy around town, but once in a more open environment, you can slip it into a higher ratio where it will get better range from the battery and reduce stress and I suppose heat generation from the motor and the battery. And to end this week's look at electrically powered two wheelers, there's the new Zeros that I saw at the American manufacturer standard EICMA. I think it's fair to say that Zero is probably the world's best known and so far most successful brand of electrically powered bikes. And here we can see the new SR model and a good looker it is too. However, the big news for Zero wasn't really in the bikes themselves, but more in the way that you'll be able to update and improve them if you so desire. We've seen this in cars for a little while now, though not without controversy. And now with Zero, it's being offered for two wheelers. In-app purchases can upgrade your bike, which by extension means the hardware for those improvements are already on the bike. And what you're doing is paying to unlock them. For example, from about March of this year, you will be able to upgrade via Zero's online Cypher store with a speed and performance boost so that the SR basically turns itself into the SRF model. That means its standard 74 horsepower grows to 113 horsepower and there's a similarly impressive leap in torque output as well. The boost will set you back 32,000 Rand. You can also get a 10% boost in the speed of your battery's recharging for three and a half grand or you can double its charging speed for 26,000 Rand. You can even upgrade via the online store, remember, the battery from a 14.4 kilowatt hour capacity to 17.3 kilowatt hour capacity, which obviously means that that extra ability was there all along. Smaller upgrades or unlocking of features, if you will, can also be performed like a 3,400 Rand payment to enable the heated grips or five and a half thousand rand to get the navigation working. This is the future and it will become much more common. Some car manufacturers, notably Tesla, have been doing it for a while. And if you think about it, KTM have been there for some time as well. You have to pay extra to get the electronic anti-wheelie disabled on their bikes. It might seem weird, but the idea is to simplify and make more affordable the cost of manufacturing. So even though it might seem really annoying to pay significant extra amounts to unlock a feature that is basically in your bike already, you'd better get used to it because this is very much the shape of the future for electrically powered bikes. Console yourself by 
opening an accessories catalog and start browsing through the 30,000 Rand exhaust systems or 10,000 Rand sat navs and you won't feel so bad. That's it from us this episode. We'll see you again next week for more bike news and reviews. So bye for now.